Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today I want to tell you about a useful tool for designing your own solar system. Uh, it is at solardesigntool.com. It's one of a couple different pieces of software and web pages that I use for designing my own uh, solar system. Whole bunch of solar panels on my garage, the do-it-yourself solar garage. I already showed you how to use the PV watts calculator, uh, the design, the kit design software at renvu.com. Uh, and laying out your, your racking and finding out what parts you need at Iron Ridge using their design assistant. So today, I want to show you how to use the Solar Design, too, the solar design tool. Um, please keep in mind I'm recording this at the very end of 2017, and the software does change. It does get updated every once in a while. Um, that's one thing I think has been really cool about this company and their software is that they do keep updating it with uh, new features, um, new pieces of equipment, all that sort of thing. Um, and this is professional software. This is actually what solar professionals use. And what's really cool is you can use it for free. All you have to do is uh, design, um, make yourself a login, and they give you a free 30-day trial. Um, if you're a professional or you want to use it after that, it's $50 per month. But I use the software to design my system, and... <laughs> You know, it doesn't take that long. I don't need an entire month to design uh, an array of solar panels on my garage. So I used my free 30-day tutorial, designed it, um, created materials to give to my utility and my uh, local building inspector, and then after that, canceled it. So it was uh, completely free. Pretty cool. So first thing you need to do, go to solardesigntool.com, make a login, a username and password for yourself, and go to it and then you'll be at a screen like this where you can create your first project. Now you might not know how to use the software, that's okay, they've got some tutorials right here, uh, some flash videos that'll uh, take you right through how to do it, and also uh, information on how to do some basic tasks. So we'll jump right into it creating our first project and I'm gonna do something uh, more or less equivalent to what I did for designing my solar garage. So we'll uh, just call this one our solar sample one and just saying that it's for learning how to use the software. Uh, site location is important. Normally you'd put in your full address, zip code, city, state. Um, the information here will be used for uh, laying out the space of the solar panels. It'll use Google Maps and it'll also pull up information for um, uh, weather and, and te temperature historical information for your area. So even if I just type in uh, my zip code, um, that's a great way to start. I actually have a really weird rural address that um, online maps absolutely hate, so I'm just going to use my uh, street name here. and enter that. Uh, you can also even put in your tax number here. And then where you pull the uh, weather data from, uh, some options are gonna pop up here. I'm going to use the airport in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now over here on the right, show additional properties. Uh, you don't have to, but there's a lot of fantastic information in here. Uh, some of it is, is pretty useful. Um, if we take a look at this, for example, uh, electrical service. Now, when you want to design your own system, one of the first things you're going to do is um, your own uh, site assessment, you know, looking at your breaker box, looking at how big uh, the area of your roof is where you would want to install solar panels, things like that. So here's some information, for example, uh, the bus bar rating may actually be different than the main breaker rating in your, um, your breaker box. So just for example, in my garage, um, I've got a 100 amp breaker, but a higher than that bus bar rating. You can also put in all the information about the system owner, or you can say, hey, that's me. I'm the system owner. Uh, already it automatically popped in who my power utility is. And the authority having jurisdiction um, What's important about that is uh, usually which year of the National Electric Code that's being used. Now, I'm actually not in the city of Oconomowoc. I'm in the town of Oconomowoc, and because of that, 
Um, it's really the county of Waukesha that I'm dealing with, uh, but we do have a local uh, inspector in my town. And one thing you will want to do is to double check which version of the NEC is in use. We're going to use standard measurements, feet, inches, things like that. And the type of building this is going on, this is all uh, related to one and two family dwellings. Um, I'd need to double check this. There's no little uh, help button right here, but uh, I believe over here is if uh, solar was put on a shed, for example. But typically we're dwelling with uh, home dwelling units, you know, a, a residence or a, a duplex. Here's some important information. We already covered this in another uh, video. In my area, we get about 30 pounds per square feet of snow in the winter. Elevation, um, again, that's kind of more talking about wind. Wind exposure category in my area is B. If you live uh, right near a coast or on a mountain or something, you might have a different wind exposure area. Um, if you are within a certain distance of the coast, you will want to put that here. Um, I'm in the middle of the country, so that does not apply. And I'm on pretty flat ground, and it's not too windy in my area. I am not in any kind of a special wind region. Uh, if you're someplace that's extra windy, uh, please take note of a few of these things here. So that's just some of the... Uh, the information to get you started on the project right there. Uh, kind of the big first thing is uh, we need to know where we're going to install our solar. Uh, in this case I'm going to define a roof face. Uh, I specifically built a garage, I designed it to point south and be large enough to hold the amount of solar that I wanted to have on it. So we'll use that define roof face. Uh, already we can see from the information uh, brought in from the uh, the weather data at that airport and also what I punched in for snow and wind information uh, We've got some environmental design parameters up here um, Probably one of the more interesting ones is the insulation uh, How much solar energy we get in my area every day? Um, southeastern Wisconsin, it's not super sunny here um, You know, it's not nearly as good as someplace like uh, Arizona or Colorado which are, are definitely sunnier, but still pretty sunny in the middle of the summer. You know, not terrible, uh, you know, March through September, but pretty darn awful in the winter. Um, it's the, the very end of December right now, and it, it is cloudy outside. It's, it's just ridiculous how, get it, how dark it gets. But if we look at more of the equinoxes, I've got more than four peak sun hours per day. And that, that's uh, some important information to know. Also, if we take a look here, um, some of this weather data is actually being pulled from Watertown, Wisconsin. And remember back when I used PV Watts, that's actually the weather station um, that I used um, to pull up information for uh, predicting how much solar I can create. Uh, we also talked a little bit about how temperature affects solar. Basically, the hotter it is, the, the less power solar panels are going to make. And the colder it is, the higher voltage they can output. And that's an important design consideration because, especially with uh, serial string inverters, it's entirely possible in a cold winter to get too high of a voltage and cause an inverter to either shut down or actually be damaged. So that low temperature is really important to know. Um, that extreme low temperature, whereas on the high end, it's more about um, your average high and knowing how much production you can expect uh, in the summer months. If, if you live someplace warm, uh, your solar can definitely get derated by quite a bit in the summer because of that. But let's define our roof face. This is basically where we can just say how big the roof is. There's some other ways to do this too. For example, you can use Google Maps and basically uh, trace over an area and it will let you know how big you can go and now I have to go to Google Maps and actually find where I live and everything um, that's kind of a pain in this case I'm gonna go back um, because I built my garage I know exactly how big it is I know what the pitch is everything like that so I'm just calling it um, let's say garage south roof 
and it looks like uh, 712 pitch was uh, left in here as a uh, default from the last time that I used the software. Um, it's nice, it shows both roof pitch, which is uh, traditional what roofers use, and also degrees, because that's typically what's used for the math, the trigonometry, and the solar design. Um, mine is, uh, it's just shy of a 712 pitch roof. Azimuth, remember that's the direction the roof faces. If it's due south, that's 180 degrees. That's just perfect, and mine is pretty darn close to that. Um, we can also look at additional roof properties. So here this is some of the more detailed information about the roof, and this can actually be used um, to help with the, uh, the permitting process if you have to deal with your building inspector. So here, uh, halfway up the roof, up to 15 foot, the roof in total is uh, 18 feet tall. One layer of roofing on it. It's new construction. Uh, a lot of people have asphalt shingles, composite shingles. In my case, I have a standing seam metal roof. And actually, when we built the roof, we used to make, uh, we made sure to use some nice thick uh, sheathing. We actually used 5 eighths plywood, very, very sturdy stuff. In terms of rafter size, the actual construction of the, of the roof, um, it's two by sixes, and it's a manufactured truss, 24 inch on center. Um, we actually did a kind of a barn raising day when building the garage. All my friends came over and we put up these manufactured trusses spaced out at 24 inches. Now, uh, if you're in a building that, hey, you didn't build it, you've never been up in the attic before, what you need to do is go up in the attic, bring your flashlight, and actually take a look at how your building is constructed. A little bit more information in here. Maximum horizontal rafter span, that's about 15 feet. And there is seriously no sag in this roof. It's brand new, and it was actually really, really well built. Uh, 29 feet wide. Brand new construction. No holes drilled where there shouldn't be. No, no water damage, no termites, nothing like that. Um, and now what I'm going to do is define some roof boundaries. Solar works really nice with a rectangular roof. Solar panels are rectangular. So you put them on a rectangular roof, works really nice. Uh, I measured my roof. I designed my roof so we know how big it is. And I'm just going to punch those numbers in. And there are no obstructions. There are, um, there's actually two skylights on the north face of the roof, but the south face was deliberately designed to be completely blank to maximize the solar. Okay, so here is our roof face. It's just a, a simple rectangle. And what we're going to need to do is uh, add in our solar panels. So we're going to build a system. Uh, here's our first array, but there's nothing in it yet. The modules, there's a drop-down list, and you can actually search for solar panels, or you can scroll down through the list. Um, there's quite a few in the database, but uh, because we already know exactly which panels I used, uh, we'll put that in. Otherwise, if you were designing this for somebody else, uh, you could maybe take a look at renvu.com, for example, and say, aha, they have on sale a certain, I don't know, a solar world panel. Some maybe a 270 watt solar world panels are in sale. You could just pop those in there. Uh, in my case, uh, it's the Helios uh, 6T 260 panels that I'm using. And then to go with that, um, I'm using the Enphase microinverters. Again, it just popped right to the top because that's what I used last time I used in the software, so kind of nice way of doing a default. Otherwise, you can see what else is on the list or uh, just type directly in there and make them pop up. Uh, ABB makes uh, some microinverters that people use, so look at that there. But we're going to go with those N-phase microinverters in this example.
uh, over here already it's showing how many I can put up here and frankly it's not too many uh, part of the reasons why is in the software it automatically adds some setbacks uh, basically three feet around either side and the top of the roof now this is something you need to check with uh, with your your authority having jurisdiction your local building inspector um, because this varies depending on where you live and which version of uh, national fire code is enforced um, I checked in my case um, I did not have to do any setbacks um, but it is important that you check on this so again just check with your uh, building inspector see if there's any setbacks you have to respect so because I don't have those setbacks I can fit a lot more solar panels up here and right away it's showing me hey you could fit 24 of them up there perfect that's exactly what I want um, also instead of portrait you can have them in landscape you could you know stagger them if they fit around obstructions for example um, it really helps you maximize how many solar panels can go on there um, in terms of mounting them uh, I know oh look at this Iron Ridge XR100 that's what I want to use and it's already right in this list along with Unirac and um, some other brand names and you can always use a generic if uh, what you want to use isn't on here but I'll use the Iron Ridge uh, modules per branch uh, we can only do up to 17 17 microinverters and solar panels per branch circuit uh, with the end phase uh, system uh, so what we're going to do here is say okay how many are going to be on one branch one circuit so for example I could say we've got three rows maybe we want to do three branches and each row is on one branch so that'd be easy I could just pick eight and it tells us potentially how many watts and how many amps would be on that circuit and we can add additional branches so uh, if I wanted to make it really easy on myself what I would have done is just uh, had three branch circuits each one being eight panels so each one of these rows would be on its own circuit um, I did not do that though because um, I would have needed three circuit breakers instead of two and I would have needed uh, three sets of wires coming down from the roof uh, to my disconnect so I said eh, instead of three branches let's just do two so basically the top row of solar panels that was um, one circuit so our branch number one I'll say okay that's eight then branch number two I had as the other two rows so we'll say okay that's got to be 16 solar panels and again over here we can see how the watts and the amps uh, changes to reflect that and this is exactly what I did in my garage I had one circuit up here and the other circuit was combined the two lower roads two lower rows and we're good there so let's save that So now we actually have quite a bit of information about our entire system. In our system details here, um, it shows uh, the two branches, how many microinverters are, are in each. Uh, this is interesting too. Uh, technically, my system is uh, 6.24 kilowatts, but that's really just based on the faceplate value of the solar panels. Uh, the microinverters in total can't make that much power and just because of other losses I know I'm never going to actually create that much power that's that's standard test conditions in the real world you never have standard test conditions the Sun's at the wrong angle the temperatures wrong whatever it is you never have standard test conditions this is almost like your theoretical uh, amount of power you can get out of there uh, my real-world power output is going to be this one um, I can expect a little over 5,000 watts of power and because I have the system installed and have actually seen how much power it makes that's pretty accurate on a nice sunny summer day I'm getting about 5,000 watts of power out of there now it's also going to give me um, my total uh, watt hours for the year um, uh, this is the estimate from PV watts it's 7.6 megawatt hours um, 
at this point that I'm recording this right now, I've had my solar system up for uh, seven months, and I've produced a little over four megawatt hours of total energy. So this number, it, it's on track to be about right, but I only have six months of data so far. I'll talk to you again after I have a year of data, and we'll see how close this is to reality. Max a AC output current, a little over uh, 20 amps. Um, so on my main breaker panel, um, I'll have to round up to the next higher breaker. So I'm going to have a 30 amp breaker where the solar power actually connects to the power in my garage. Uh, down here, just some general information about the setup, including uh, the weight. Uh, this is kind of interesting here. Row spacing, one inch. Um, I actually spaced out uh, the solar panels half an inch, but if I did it again, yeah, I'd, I'd give them a little bit more room. I'd give them an inch between these rows of solar panels. Now, the next thing we can do, if we look under Available Actions, we can edit our module inverter configuration and we can add our balance of system components. Let's just double check the module inverter configuration. Uh, essentially, that's what we just already did. I'm happy with that. Um, if we hadn't already done it, that's where we would do it right there. We'll just save this. And the other available action here is adding balance of system components. So let's go do that. Um, right at the top, uh, we have two options of whether we want to go around the outside of the building or do we want to penetrate the roof and go through the attic. I ran the conduit around the exterior of the building, and that is, in my opinion, the preferred way to go. Why put a hole in a nice brand new roof, especially a nice new metal one? does not make sense to me, um, but if you have... Uh, an asphalt roof, you've got easy access to the attic, you could uh, transition into the interior of the building, and Solideck makes a kind of a nice junction box. That's It's sort of a, a flashing in a junction box, so it slides up under a shingle and uh, you do the penetration right there. In this case, we're going to stick with exterior conduit, and I actually just ran it around the edge of the roof. Interconnection options. This is a pretty important uh, sort of a thing right here. There's the load side or the supply side. The uh, supply side um, is also known as as line side. Uh, load side basically you're just running in through one of the circuit breakers. Supply side is um, connecting at the power company side of things. So typically this is a second power meter would be added uh, so you have one that goes forward and one that goes backwards. Uh, if you're doing that, though, um, typically you're going to want a professional electrician to do that work for you. Um, it's a little, little more complicated. You may even need the power company to shut off power at your local transformer. Load side, nice and simple and expensive. You just add a breaker uh, to your main breaker box. Nice and simple. Um, I do have multiple AC circuits. You know, there's two of them. Uh, from the roof coming on down. Utility disconnect. Um, typically, the utility will ask that you have a disconnect. Um, this is primarily so that if a utility worker needs to turn off your solar or uh, on an emergency personnel, firefighter, somebody needs to disconnect your solar, um, they can. Typically, a box with a big red handle on it, kachunk, you turn it on and off. Um, the other thing, though, is if we read here, it actually says if the model you use is not here or not in our database, um, ask us so we can add it. Um, because these are kind of some of the standard disconnects, the sort of thing you'd get at the hardware store or Home Depot or Lowe's, that sort of thing. Um, mine was not in here. I used the Midnight Solar uh, Combiner Disconnect. It's not listed here. Um, so just for this example, I'm going to pick a different one. We'll use a uh, fusible 30 amp disconnect just to show you how it's going to look when we're all done here. Um, we are not going to have a production meter. Um, I actually use the software from Enphase to track how much production I'm making. Uh, here's another thing. 
how will the modules and rails be grounded? That is important. Grounding is very important in electrical systems, including solar. And in this case, because I'm using those N-phase microinverters that they have the integrated grounding built in, and it's working uh, with the, uh, the iron ridge racking, those two together will allow me to use integrated grounding built right in. I do not need a separate big heavy cable um, and a bunch of lugs to connect that cable to uh, the racking, the frame of the solar panels, things like that. Um, but that is how many, many, many solar systems are, are done. Uh, just not in this particular case. I'm gonna be using the integrated grounding. And we will submit this. So give it a second to save and upload, and then we can go back. Okay, what kind of wiring are we going to use? What are the distances? Uh, THWN uh, wiring, it's gonna be copper wiring. Uh, here's specifications for our circuit connections. And these are actually um, distances uh, between the solar panels, our, our branch output, and then some distances here between the combiner panel and the utility disconnect. Um, my utility disconnect is actually um, very, very close uh, to my main breaker box. So when we're looking at uh, the distance, uh, very, very little. Uh, this was like three feet. Uh, the combined output of the inverters to the disconnect is actually going to be zero because in my midnight solar, it, the combiner and the disconnect are, are one single thing. The transition box to the uh, sub-panel, uh, again, very short, about 20 feet. So relatively short wiring runs here. And there's some information you can um, uh, edit temperature information here. So again, this is all for the type of wiring you're using, the type of conduit you're using, uh, how far above the roof the conduit is, uh, where where this is going through. Um, let's continue. So at this point, um, we've got information about the solar panels, our inverters, uh, we specified our balance of system, we, we put in the conduit sizes, we've got an, a nice summary of our system, we've arranged our modules. Um, cool, where do we go from here though? We see a lot of blank over here. Well, what you wanna do is take a look at PV documents. Let's click on that. So now this is really all about the documents, the reports, and that's really the big part of what this software does is it generates documents. It creates uh, the paperwork that you can use and you can uh, turn it into your, your building inspector, to your uh, power utility. Uh, if you're a professional solar company, uh, these are documents you would actually create and give to the homeowner. Uh, basically, it's a bunch of PDF documents. Uh, some of these you can also export to spreadsheets, uh, which could be handy for budgeting and things like that. Or, uh, you know, maybe you have to just place an order for materials. It's great to have that bill of materials. Um, use that to place your order. Down here, the permit package creator. Uh, this is where you'll actually create uh, this permitting package, this uh, paperwork you would turn in, and you can say whether or not you want to include certain things. There's also some options here where if, if you're a professional, you can upload your company logo, um, you know, so it'll say, you know, Ben's Solar Power Company in the upper corner, whatever it is. Uh, we're going to leave all that off. Uh, let's take a look at some of these other things. Partial site plan, that's basically going to be the... Um, an aerial view and some other basic information. The single line diagram, that's a pretty important one. And we're going to want to take a look at that. Uh, electrical calculations, maybe you do or don't want to include that. Up to you. You can include or not include whatever you want here. 
I'm just going to say yes to all just so we can take a look at, at some of these. And then down at the very bottom here, it says download. So let's hit that. And now what's going to happen is it's going to make a great big PDF document for us and download it locally to our computer. And it's PDF, so it's going to open up in uh, Acrobat Reader here. I clicked yes to everything, so it's going to make um, an 11 page document. Uh, the first page has information about the project. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on this. Maybe you can read it this a little, little bit better. Uh, project details. If I entered all the property owner and the full address information, it would fill all of this in. Uh, along with contractor information, I'd have that all filled in if I was running a, a solar power company. Um, this defaulted um, to uh, the road that I live on, although nowhere near me. Uh, like I said, uh, my address isn't real friendly with uh, Google Maps and that sort of thing. So when I actually did this for myself, I, I had to manually edit this. Basically, I just cut and paste uh, from Google Maps after manually placing my house on there. A lot of information over here. Uh, system details, how big of a system it is, uh, what inverters, what solar panels you're going to use, things like that. Let's go down to the next page. Second page just has some general notes on it. Uh, in this case, for example, that it's a utility interactive system. It's a grid tie system and there's no batteries with it. On this page, we have our single line diagram. Uh, the single line diagram is sort of a, a very basic schematic of how all the wiring is hooked up. It's not real readable here. I don't know if zooming in was a good thing or not. Um, uh, I'll also have a link to on instructables.com. I'll, I'll show you exactly what I did. Uh, but basically here, oh, hourglass, let's, uh, oh, that's a find, not a zoom. I'm just going to try to zoom in a little bit here. So hopefully you can see this a little bit better now. Uh, there's a lot of information on here. Now here's one thing that I don't love. They cram this pictogram way up in the corner when there's all this empty space right in the middle, which I thought that's kind of stupid. Uh, hopefully um, they, they update the software and they, they make this work a little bit better because that just seems like such a poor use of space. But essentially if we look up here, uh, it shows the solar panels, the microinverters, uh, 8 in one branch, 16 in the other. Here's the green dotted line and we can see how that's the ground the grounding system and it does eventually connect in my main breaker panel and from there into the the main ground um, at my garage. Um, in this case here um, the AC combiner and the utility disconnect those were two separate things. Now I actually used um, a, a different device that midnight solar uh, AC combiner and disconnect so what I did, um, I used this as free software, but it didn't have the actual device I was using. So I brought this into Photoshop and I manually edited this, deleted this, cleaned it up, um, replaced it with a, a symbol representing the equipment I did use. And then I also um, uh, edited some of the data in here to match as well. Um, after the utility disconnect, it shows my service panel. It shows the correct information in terms of the 100 amp breaker as the main breaker in the garage. Um, it shows the 30 amp circuit breaker that the solar feeds into. Um, and then likewise, in this data over here, um, it lists the current that's gonna be coming in on those two branch circuits. It lists the wiring. This is one of those things too that's kind of cool. Um, is it specifies, uh, it, it kind of does all the math in the background. Um, I took a solar installation course through the Midwest Renewable Energy Association, and a lot of the work that you do in a class like that is, is math about uh, voltage drop and going through and derating wiring to make sure that uh, 
well, sure, we're going to use 12 gauge wiring, but it's so long that based on the amount of current going through it, well, maybe you got to go to 10 gauge wiring instead. Uh, all that math is really built right into that software. You know, when we just punched everything in, for example, um, how far is it from the junction box to the combiner box? All that information did the math for what would be needed here. Now, in my case, relatively low current, relatively small distances. Uh, things were about as expected using just 12 gauge wiring uh, from the roof to the combiner box and then 10 gauge wiring going to that 30 amp uh, connection. Um, it also lists here that I could have used um, half inch uh, PVC uh, pipe, half inch PVC conduit. Um, I actually used three quarter inch conduit and you know what, they're both so darn cheap and frankly it was just uh, every bit as cheap and easy to use three quarter inch conduit as half inch conduit. So that's what I did. I used three quarter inch conduit, made it easier to pull uh, the wiring through, but I could have used half inch conduit if I would have wanted. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other information here. It does tell us about what circuit breakers uh, to use. Um, I could have gotten away with using a 15 amp breaker um, on the one circuit. Um, some of this information too is also used for um, the signage, for example. And in fact, I think I did click the um, what signs do we have to use where feature. Um, basically, I have some signs like this that I had made for my project and I stuck them on the uh, the disconnect box and on the main breaker, a couple other places. Now, one thing that is kind of cool too about using microinverters is that I didn't have to uh, put little stickers on all the conduit from the roof down into the building saying, warning, this is, this is solar, it's DC, it doesn't turn off. Um, and if you're using the traditional uh, DC side of things, you do have to do that. So one advantage of the uh, microinverters is it actually, um, it makes things simpler all the way to the point of less signage, which was kind of nice too. Uh, here's some of the information in terms of, um, again, current, ampacity, all this information. This was all done automatically through the software. Uh, this is all stuff that normally you would have to do manually by hand do the math figure it out you know figure out um you know what size wires you're going to need all that and again i highly recommend that you do take a, a solar design class if you want to design your own solar system i did it, it was it was great it's very good knowledge but again here using the solar design tool.com software it does all the math for you so it, it's it's pretty cool and also it's good as a double check you know go through design it manually, come through, use the software, use the software as a check to make sure that you did your work correctly. Again, it's just the information on the branch circuits, the combined output, um, all of that. Utility disconnect information. Um, a lot of this in here, there's, there's some rules of thumb, um, you know, continuous current, uh, some other things like that. Um, make sure you're using the right size wiring, right uh, current ratings for things. What else is kind of neat here is in this PDF document, this permitting package, um, it automatically included the spec sheets from some of the pieces of equipment that I used. So I actually already had this one page spec sheet that I downloaded from Enphase, but right in the Solar Design Tool software, because I specified this piece of equipment right in this PDF uh, permit package file, it included this data sheet. I'm going to scroll down a little more. Now here's the data sheet on the Iron Ridge system. Um, so this is all great because this is showing uh, the equipment to the utility, to the building inspector that I'm going to be using on my project. Uh, it, it shows how it's, you know, it's got a good fire rating. Um, there's some frequently asked questions here. So it, it's laying out all the, the UL numbers, uh, the fire class code, all that information, any uh, questions that a building inspector might have are already answered right here in this permitting package. And in fact, when I gave my 
all of this information to both the building inspector and my utility representative, uh, literally neither one had any questions. I said, here's all the information. I sent it to them ahead of time uh, with the utility. They looked it over. It took a while, but when they got back to me, uh, they did not have any requests for any changes. They did not have any questions. They said, perfect, go ahead with it. Uh, likewise, with the building inspector, uh, he had no questions, um, nothing. It was, it was great. Um, so by uh, having this full permitting package, giving it to the right people, um, it lets everybody know exactly what's expected. Um, again, here with Iron Ridge, um, it also, here we're talking about that grounding, and it also shows uh, the stopper sleeves and the, the UFOs, everything that I, I used here. Uh, right here. This is the information on the grounding because uh, I used that integrated grounding system. This is the footnote uh, applying specifically to the end phase microinverters with the integrated ground. So right here from the manufacturer, it tells my building inspector that yes, this is okay. Absolutely, this can be done. It's perfectly okay to do. And that is the last page of my permit package PDF here. Uh, one thing that's kind of missing from all of this is just like a, a diagram of the roof or um, kind of a map of my property. Um, right here on the top page, it just kind of shows the location. Um, one thing that I did was I edited this permit package. Uh, like I said, I actually had to make an edit to uh, the single line diagram here to make sure that that was correct and properly reflected the reality of what equipment I was using. But the other thing that I did was um, I, I did a drawing of my garage and of my property uh, showing where the solar was going, the disconnect was going, how it was um, in. The garage is a detached building, a separate building. So I also showed how that was um, uh, with an eye shot between the meter and the garage. And for more information on that, please uh, take a look at my, my total project and some of the other documents that I have with that. So that is the solardesigntool.com uh, software. Uh, it works great. There's a bunch of other features we didn't even cover in here. For example, import roof. There's a, there's a web page where you can design uh, buildings and it will actually export information right to here. Uh, you can also, you could do ground mount systems. Um, there's some other neat things in here as well. It's, it's very much full-blown solar design software. You know, if you're a solar company, you can brand this. You can make it all look exactly like it's yours. And frankly, my little walkthrough here um, took longer to show off how to do half the stuff than to actually do it. I mean, legitimately, if you were a, a salesperson, for example, and you wanted to do kind of like a, a basic little sales proposal, you could probably do that in about 10 minutes using the software. Um, it's really, uh, it's pretty cool that way. So if we look at our design details here, right now design stage, it says permit ready design but before I specified some of the others, it actually said, hey, this is ready for kind of a, a sales presentation. Uh, so again, the software is free for 30 days and it's uh, 50 bucks a month as a subscription after that. If you want to start working in solar design or you already are and you're, you're at a solar design company, great piece of software. So that's it for now. Please check out uh, some of my information on instructables.com and on my YouTube channel. Stay charged up.